had fun drawing my little burr, my bug, in amber yesterday. But that was sort of, oh, I decided it was going to be an amber after I started the drawing. So let's see what happens if I decide at the beginning that I'm drawing a bug in amber. Make him a dragonfly. First double pair of wings. Of course, it looks like he has many more wings than that because of the refraction of the amber that he's in. He or she is in, I don't know how to tell the difference between a boy dragonfly and a girl dragonfly. Reminds me of that joke. Have you ever smelled mothballs? And you say yes. And then they say, how do you get their little legs apart? Pum pum pum. So, here's where the amber part comes in. Amber, of course, has a surface that is in front of the object inside of it. It also has a surface that's behind the object that is encased. And how do you draw both of those things? So this is the Everything that goes over the bug is the surface nearest the eye. And now I'm going to draw what's behind the bug, the surface, the other end. And how is that going to work? Who knows how that's going to work? So what's fun about drawing is you sort of you think it's going to work one way, and you in your mind it looks perfect, and then when you actually see what it looks like when you're done drawing it, you say, "Oh, boy, my imagination." Did that one wrong. And um, the people who, I used to be this way, who didn't allow the drawing to talk back at you um, are missing out because the drawing does have something to say when you're done. Uh, it's saying, you know, I'm not done yet. You might think I'm done, but I'm not done yet. Look, look over here. This part is not resolved. And I used to do sculptural pieces at one point in my career, and because of the time it took me to create these sculptures, I didn't really allow the sculptures to tell me things. Um, and when I started doing illustrations for Penworld magazine years ago, um, I allowed the dialogue between the drawing and the creator to make improvements on my design. Um, composition is always, in my mind, the primary thing to think about, and the sculptural pieces I did didn't really have a compositional aspect to it. Um, and I, I missed that. 
I miss that. I used to paint and I used to draw and I used to plan things out and then I started doing these sculptural things where I didn't, uh, where I wasn't doing that. I had an idea and I did it. And so, uh, I listened to the drawing. That's what I'm talking about, listening to the drawing. So I'm trying to do that here, I'm trying to listen to the look at the thing and saying, does this look like it's inside a piece of amber or is it just a bug that's been flattened by a big old boot? And I think I need to have some more lines like this that are going sort of over the whole thing. And by making them thicker like this, they come forward and the thinner lines go Backward. And the lines that are further apart and thicker come forward. The laws of perspective, I guess, would hold true with crosshatch lines. Am I running out of ink? Yes, I am. Fill it with ink. I'm using. Alpha Romeo ink, whatever that is. Well, this looks pinker. One of the things that happens with my drawings is, as you can see, the ink, the ink that might have been in the pen previous to me putting red ink, there might have been some ink that was still residue of the old ink which might have been black or blue, that is coloring the, the ink that I, I then put in it. And so, as you can see, this fresher ink is a little redder, though it dries darker, a little bit redder than the ink that was in it before. Now, because I'm using this uh, metallic paper. It's reflective metallic paper. Who knows what um, what this would have looked like. Sorry, I finished my sentence. If had I used just white paper, the metallic bits that are in the paper here do not absorb the ink. So there's um, there might be ink on it, but it doesn't really get as dark as it would if it were regular paper. Porous paper. Paper, as you know, is very important to uh, the resulting image. And ink can it on top of the paper. It can be absorbed into the paper. The ink can bleed. The ink can skip. All sorts of things to think about when you're choosing the paper you want to use. There's one guy in the fountain pen sketchers group who loves drawing on napkins and he's able to get great yeah, I'm talking about you. He's able to get great uh, effects. Um, he knows how to use that the medium of napkin, napkin drawing, a napkin whisperer. He knows how to how to take advantage in some cases of the bleeding that happens with the absorbent napkin, and sometimes he. He, uh, or most of the time, he's always aware of it because he's drawing on napkins, but um, he will maybe draw a little slower in some spots so that the ink is absorbed in to the fibers of the napkin, and other times he might draw very, very quickly to have that avoided. And 
it's just one more thing that he has to think about, which I'm glad he does because I don't know whether I could keep all those balls in the air. I'm adding little things like just that little bit just to have your eye not keep on going back and forth like this. You know, I, I'm, there's this tendency to, you know, get lost in the, for your eye to get lost in the diagonal lines that are happening, so you mix that up a bit. Lines that go in the opposite direction, sort of, they're kind of like breaks. Look at me. Look at me. Don't, don't ignore me. Stop ignoring me. Look at me. Look at me. It's saying. Well, not only does this bug look like it's been encased in amber, but it also looks like it suffered, it was stepped on before it was encased in amber. Um, anyway, so that's just another thing, thing, just another bug, another bug. Before I sign off, let me just try this red ink on white paper. It does appear darker against the white, as it would, whether it's darker or not, it would appear darker against white, but it's actually darker as well because it's being absorbed into the, into the fibers. So again, this is drawn with a Schaefer pen from the 30s and still going strong. Nice, slightly fine, flexible nib. Quite a sweet little pen. And it's in red. Even better. <laughs>